Hello, hello, welcome back to the channel, Windows to Heaven Art. In this episode, we're going to do a fun seascape painting using oil paint on an 11 by 14 inch canvas. So a little bit of a smaller canvas. Should be a lot of fun. Let's head out to the studio. It's high spring now. This is the time that all of the flowers are blooming. I absolutely love this time of spring. It's very inspiring. And as you can see, the cats love this time of year as well. They like to sit by the window. They have a special shelf um, built for them with their, their beds on. Um, and they love to lay up there, lounge up there, and just soak up the sunshine pouring through their window. And I think they probably really like to watch the birds as well. So, yeah, you can clearly see that they are enjoying spring as well. <laughs> so, I can't wait to get out to the studio and start painting. We're going to jump right into this painting with very little prep. So after getting everything set up, I'm going to take my 11 by 14 inch canvas here, which has already been toned with burnt sienna. Uh, and I'm going to start sketching out the composition directly onto that. And it is important to note as well, uh, not to use too much oil paint for the sketch if you're going to start painting directly on it. Because as you can see me jumping into the sky here, um, I actually picked up some of that umber. And so I just took a rag and kind of wiped the sketch back a little bit just because I don't want that dark brown mixing into the sky here. And remember, at this stage in the painting, everything is going to be really simple. So keep it simple, don't overthink it. When you're doing the sky, it's just important to start as simple as you can and get those main, you know, the main cloud shapes and stuff put out there without putting too much detail on. And you just notice uh, I wiped away at that point some of the sketching paint, the, the dark brown, away so that I could start painting the wave because the wave is going to be ultramarine blue. And I've also, by the way, listed all the colors that I used in the description box below. So if you're wondering what color paints I'm using, that'll be in the description box. But yeah, so I wiped away some of that excess paint for the sketch because I didn't want it mixing into my blue water. Which is a really easy thing to do. I, I have um, some shop towel rags that I use when painting, usually to clean my brushes off before reloading with paint, but also it's handy to wipe away excess paint that you don't want from your painting. So you can see here, I am, like I said, keeping everything super simple from the outset and I'm just laying down the main shapes and movement of the water. And also, I didn't really plan this painting out at all before jumping right into it. I really, um, 
as we'll talk about later, I really should have, but I just wanted to kind of take it cold turkey. And right here you can see kind of the finished block in, although as I got looking at it, there were some things I didn't really like about it, so I decided to go right back into it and kind of redo some things. You can see I take a shop towel here and I'm wiping away some of the excess paint um, because I just didn't like how the wave was a little bit too high in the background and then just I didn't like the movement of the water as much. So you can see I'm taking some sky color and I'm actually lowering the sky a little bit so that it, it makes that background wave uh, come down quite a bit and I am I think enlarging the foremost wave a little bit as well just to create a better balance because the sketch that I originally did um, it uh, it really didn't end up looking how I wanted it to look and that is just a testament to how beneficial it is to plan your painting out beforehand and I've actually done a video on how I plan out a painting beforehand and I will leave a link to that video in the description box below in case you are interested and want to see how I do that but it it was really something I should have done for this particular painting uh, because it would have saved me a lot of time. I did a lot of, um, I'm going to call them rabbit trails in this painting, where I would test out different things to see if I liked it, um, and that really cost me a lot of time painting, time that I could have saved if I would have planned out the painting so that I would know what to do from the very beginning. So in other words, it's a really good point to make in this video to really plan out your composition before you paint it. So this is a picture of the finished block in and I went ahead and took that image and did a little bit of planning um, digitally and that was the image that I came up with for the direction that I wanted to take this painting in. So now you can see I'm starting to implement those changes that I did digitally to, to the composition, um, which I have to say it again, you guys know that I do uh, digital art a lot as well. It really, really helps to plan out what to do if you can just take a picture of where you're at in the painting and then just tweak it digitally. I use the program called GIMP which I downloaded free uh, onto my computer and it's a lot like Photoshop really easy to use very intuitive and I use that thing so much when it comes to planning out paintings and seeing you know if like this thing would look good or if you know, like, that lighting should be a certain way, or if this color would look good there. I do a lot of digital planning using that program. So that's just kind of a side note um, to let you guys in on the program that I'm using to do my digital work. And you can see, based on that digital edit that I did of my painting, I am kicking off the modeling stage with... Um, making those changes that I did when editing it digitally. I also did have a few reference photos um, to help me shape out the water. Um, I am not just painting this solely off of the digital edit that I did of my blocking stage. I'm also looking at some reference photos as well of oceanscapes to help give me a sense for how the water should look and um, just how to create movement in the water. 
and right here you notice I'm working back over the sky. The sky is going to have quite a bit of editing. You see right there that I am mixing a bright kind of peachy orange color for the sky and that's because I decided to make the sky a sunset sky. So I'm going back over the painting and by the way um, when I moved on to the modeling stage from the block-in stage I left everything to dry so I'm painting over a dry sky which is much easier to work with. You can see I am putting in some distant clouds, doing some orange highlights of the sunset sun shining on them, which it is really, um, really not complicated what I'm doing here. It, basically, I'm trying to keep it simple because the sky is not supposed to be the focal point of the painting. So I, I want the eye to be drawn into the main wave and the sky is going to hopefully complement the detail of the wave, not override it. At this stage in the painting, I am refraining from using pure titanium white because I'm reserving that bright highlight for the end of the painting. So I'm using lighter blues, etc. when it comes to painting the foam. Um, but I'm paying, obviously as you can see here, a little bit more attention to a little bit more of the finer details of, you know, like the foam and the spume of the ocean here. And I want the light to kind of filter from the background just across the painting to the foreground because kind of that's kind of where uh, the sunset light is is going to be filtering from and you notice that I'm just continuing as well to use my lights and darks to shape the wave I'm painting darker blue in the bottom of the eye of that wave because that's going to be a really shadowed portion of the water. And also I am taking my brighter highlighted uh, blue and kind of painting areas where it will be catching the light more or, you know, areas that are just really foamy as well that, you know, creating a sense of that, that white water. And right here you can see I'm taking a very light colored green and I just mix that, you know, using the green that I had and some titanium white and maybe even a little bit of the medium yellow that I had on hand as well to create a very light green to put into the eye of the wave. And that's what I was just doing. Um, now I'm just continuing to shape the, the wave there um, and create a sense of how the water is going to be moving and then working back onto the eye of the wave. And I don't want the water to look too much like it's getting direct sunlight because it's, it's really more of a sunset glow that is going to be coming through the water. So it's not direct sunlight. So if I can just refrain from too much, I guess, contrast in the water, that will really help it to fit the setting that I have it in, which is sunset. Right there, I decided to kind of put our light source 
down in that bottom right hand corner as opposed to the bottom left hand corner. Uh, that's just because I kind of changed the direction of where the light was coming from to that area. So I'm like, okay, I got to paint that in now. So I'm taking um, that uh, kind of orangish color. Um, <laughs> I don't quite remember what I used to uh, mix that sunset color, but it was basically... Well, actually, I do. Uh, it was a lizard and crimson and medium yellow along with titanium white that I used to mix that color. So now I'm creating the light source to be coming in from the bottom right-hand corner. You can see I'm adding in some lighter highlights of the sunset in that area. And I think that will really help the painting come along nicer. And if you're wondering how to do clouds um, and also just, you know, how to, to paint water, I think the best way to learn is to watch somebody paint it, kind of like you're doing right now, um, but also keep in mind, don't try to overcomplicate it. Start with, with the basics and start out as simple as you can. And then the more you do it, the better you'll get at it, and the more you'll be able to make it look more complex. But I think a huge killer for painting well is trying to overcomplicate it from the outset. If you start out simple, you'll see where you're at, and you'll also gain quicker experience on how to paint things and improve them if you're keeping it simple. You can see I am painting the shoreline here where the water is kind of receding back and I've also put some of that sunset color into the sand to give the illusion that the sand is wet and it is reflecting that sunset color. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm, I'm creating some lines of foam, you know, showing that a previous wave has crashed up on the shore and it, now it's pulling back into the ocean. and you'd be surprised at how you can create an illusion of you know really shallow moving water across the top of the sand by just painting in some highlights mixed in with some shadows as well it really creates a nice kind of translucent moving water that uh, really like I was just telling you uh, it wasn't super complicated it may look complicated when you're, you know, looking at the painting, but it really, when you're doing it right, I think most often it's not hard to do. At least, not like you would think. So now we're getting into the detail stage, which is when I'm starting to pull out more of that pure titanium white for the highlights. And painting is going to start wrapping up here pretty soon. We're just about done. I'm just putting on those final highlights. And you notice as well, I'm leaving kind of the middle portion. You see that, that uh, kind of that darker blue color that just runs along the middle of the wave. I'm leaving that unhighlighted because that area is not getting any light directly so there won't be those bright highlights in that area it'll help it look more shadowed and here i re kind of painted over that sandy area and i am starting to you know re-put in the sky highlights uh, that's just because I wanted the sand there to look more like there was water moving over it instead of... I don't know, I just I just switched it up a little bit just because I wanted it to look just a little bit different. So, in other words, you can do that when you're painting. Don't be afraid to take an area and, you know, kind of redo it if you're not happy with it.
you can see I am applying a few final details. You, you notice I put in some really bright sky above that ridge that I had in the background just to create a better sense of like maybe that is a distant coastline. And now right here I'm taking some of that sunset yellow and painting in some sun rays. So just a few highlights in the clouds here to help show that there is some strong sunset light. And we're ready to put in the final touches into the eye of the wave, which I used a kind of a, uh, I don't know, a, a really bright green and just barely touched it, as you saw, into the top of the wave there and then blended it out. And also made that part of the water look a little bit more broken up and rough, which is super easy to do. I basically just painted some light, light blue and white over the top of that area to create a little bit more of a look of uh, foam as well. And we are basically done. Just a few more finishing touches of highlights, and we're gonna call it done. Thank you guys so much for coming out to the studio today and enjoying this video along with me. If you liked it, be sure to leave me a like and subscribe for future videos. I try to put one out every week or so. Leave me a comment if you have any questions. Until next time, God bless you guys. We'll see you later.